Are Star Wars fans really to blame for all the chaos in the galaxy? Some people in the mainstream media think they are. But before I get into that, wanted to thank everybody for checking out my videos, checking out my channel. If you're new here and you like the content that I'm putting out, what I'm things that I'm doing, uh, hit that subscribe button, smash that like button. And with that out of the way, let's get on with the video. So it's perusing the interwebs social media, news sites, whatever, and I came across this. Star Wars Biggest Problem is the Fans, written by Collider. Now, <laughs> I gotta say, <laughs> picking up and carrying the water for the creators of The Acolyte, or I should say the creator, Leslie Headland, former assistant to Harvey Weinstein, who has also blamed the fans. Also, Kathleen Kennedy has blamed the fans. It's getting old. It's getting tiresome. And I will implore you, Collider, and any other shill media pundit, website, news site, entertainment site, whatever it may be, just stop. It's lazy. With a capital L. So here's the article. It's written by Cameron Barnett. Star Wars projects, Star Wars projects have been facing relentless online hate and criticism impacting performers and creators. Oh my gosh. They, the performers and the creators can't take the heat because their project is poorly written and it stinks. Modern Star Wars projects have expanded the universe with diverse representation, but also weather backlash in the process. You know, representation has always been a part of Star Wars. Since the beginning, since the original movie in 1977, there has been diversity in Star Wars. Not the forced diversity we have now where they're checking a bunch of boxes to satisfy DEI requirements to get a higher ESG score to make themselves look good in the eyes of those on the left. The future of Star Wars should be focused on representation and inclusivity, overcoming toxic elements in the fandom. Yeah, those toxic elements in the fandom, what they want is they want to watch a show that has a good story, a good plot line, good character development. Not the trash that's being put out there now. So when this article hit over at that park place, John F. Trent, check out his YouTube channel, check out his work here on that park place. It's excellent. Decided to uh, pick apart this article here. And starts out, Canadian-owned publication Collider spews racist hate and blames white male Star Wars fans for Lucasfilm's crappy TV shows like The Acolyte. Yeah, it's always the fans' fault. The show stinks, and it's the fans' fault the show stinks. We can't help it that the fans got the word out and word of mouth spread and that the show is rated terribly on Rotten Tomatoes. It hasn't been review bombed. I mean, if anything, look at the critics that are popping up this piece or propping up this piece of trash. It still has a what, an 83, 84, 85% score on Rotten Tomatoes? And that's because the critics are all in this little bubble and they all agree with the goings on at Disney and Lucas Films. And so they're going to do whatever they can to prop up this, this show. That's why critics now are irrelevant, in my humble opinion. So Collider, an online website owned by Canadian corporation Valnet that runs other left-wing entertainment websites such as MovieWeb, Screen Rant, and CBR, published an article blaming Star Wars fans for Lucasfilm creating crappy television shows such as The Acolyte. The article titled Biggest Star Wars Problem, Star Wars Biggest Problem is the Fans, written by Cameron Barnett, 
dismisses legitimate criticisms of shows like The Acolyte. Yeah, those legitimate criticisms are considered to be toxic. When, you know what? People have watched your show. People don't like it. People are, le are no longer watching the show. Episode 6 just dropped. I bet its viewership is down from episode 5, which was down from episode 4, which was down from episode 3. I bet that trend continues. We shall see. Barnett writes, Leslie Headland's groundbreaking series has been relentlessly review bombed online. Again, this, this show has not been review bombed. Word got out. The audience has spoken. Causing the Acolyte to possess a huge disparity between its positive critical reception and abysmal audience score on aggregate websites like Rotten Tomatoes. Since the majority of these hate-filled criticisms are either overreactions to alleged continuity errors within the Star Wars universe or backlash aimed at attacking the show's long overdue inclusivity. The bad actors spreading them are clearly spinning controversy out of nothing. And this manufactured outrage can be directly traced back to the demographics of the original trilogy. Oh my gosh. The original trilogy. Um, Star Wars was written for men. Young men. I'm not discounting the fact there are women fans of Star Wars. But Star Wars is a, is a property meant for men. It's the patriarchy. There's nothing wrong with pointing out that the Acolyte Lucasfilm and Walt Disney Company are promoting inclusivity. In fact, it is just and right given inclusivity is an evil ideology that prioritizes de demonizing white men. It does. That's part of DEI. DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion, means we get what we got with the Acolyte. Because they're checking boxes again. The show introduced a force replacement called the Thread. Claimed that a pair of lesbian space witches created two twins through the Thread. And has multiple Jedi discover a Sith attack. Despite the Jedi believing the Sith to be extinct for over a millennia. <sighs> He's conflating two different things here. Remember the line in the Phantom Menace in the Jedi Council when they first discovered there was a Sith among them and the Sith had been extinct for a millennia but yet mysteriously a hundred years prior to the Phantom Menace which is the time frame that the Acolyte takes place First of all, you have a character that shouldn't be there. I forget his name. I'm sure you guys in the chat will be able to fill in the blank there. But that the Sith shows up a century before the Phantom Menace when they've been extinct for more than a millennia, which is... Uh, let's see. Uh, a thousand years? Give or take? So yeah, that's a continuity issue. And replacing the force with something called the thread contradicts everything Master Yoda said. And I believe it was the Empire Strikes Back. So yeah, there's continuity issues. From there, Barnett makes it abundantly clear that the demographics of the original trilogy are white men. Barnett pens the first film of the original trilogy originally just titled Star Wars upon its 1977 release, was shown to the public during a decade of classic hits like Jaws, Rocky. This was a time when Hollywood relied almost exclusively on traditional tropes to tell stories exclusively through Eurocentric white male lens. Doesn't stop there, though. Barnett continues... Despite taking place in a galaxy far, far away from the filmmaking conventions of Earth, Star Wars original trilogy features 
a mostly white cast, female characters with largely unrealized potential, and no LGBTQ plus storylines depicted on screen. Um, yeah, it was 1977. I am so tired of we have to apply today's standard to 40 years ago, 50 years ago. I'm so tired of that we we eliminate things out of the out of the lexicon because what was done 40 years ago isn't um what I want to say isn't uh We'll just say it's not right in today's world. And you can't compare eras like that. Star Wars by nature is diverse. And again, I have no problem with inclusivity if it's part of the story. If it's the secondary thing that happens as part of the story, what's going on with the acolyte isn't part of the story. It was done intentionally to check off a box. It was not clear by now the entire piece is written purely based on Barnett's evil ideology. Obviously, Barnett wants to push disordered lifestyles and various woke ideologies and wants to use Star Wars as a vehicle to do it. He's upset that a significant portion of the Star Wars fan base rejects him, and he's now lashing out. To no surprise, Barnett follows the three laws of a social justice warrior as defined by Vox Day and SJW's Always Lie, taking down the Thought Police. Barnett then doubles down while powerful female leaders like Mon Mothma and Carrie Fisher's iconic Princess Leia are outspoken forces for good in the trilogy, the latter's relationship with the Force and her father is glossed over in favor of her brother. And Leia's infamous bikini scene at Jabba's Palace in Star Wars Return of the Jedi feels like fodder for a generation of male fantasies. He goes on to claim the narrative quality of Disney's sequel trilogy aside, the movie's progressive decision to hire Daisy Ridley as Rey and John Boyega as Finn marked important first for the franchise's leads, yet these casting decisions also resulted in constant online harassment for both actors in the aftermath of the performances, and many detractors trying to drag Star Wars back to a less inclusive past. Oh, small minds. Very small minds. Daisy Ridley rejected this narrative during an appearance on Today earlier this year. She was asked, I just have to ask because there are some of the, I'd say, extreme Star Wars fans who have made this a conversation on the internet about how they don't want a female director, which seems bizarre because episodes of The Mandalorian were directed by females. Kathleen Kennedy has been overseeing all of this, so what's your take? She responded, this is Daisy Ridley. I think my take is things get blown out of proportion and the interactions I've ever had with people have been nothing but wonderful and supportive. And honestly, the day we announced I was coming back at Celebration last year, you cannot imagine the joy and all the and the goodwill in that room. She also said, so I have only ever been embraced and I think we're going to make a great film and great and people will love it. Barnett continued to lie by pointing out, by pointing to the now debunked Access Media claim that actress Kelly Marie Tran quit Instagram due to Star Wars fans. Kelly Marie Tran's heartwarming performance as Rose Tico drew the ire of racist internet horde, causing Tran to quit Instagram in order to look out for her mental health. In an op-ed in the New York Times, Kelly Marie Tran explained why she left social media. The op-ed makes absolutely no mention of her decision had anything to do with Star Wars fans. In fact, the only mention of Star Wars is at the end of the op-ed where she declares, I am the first woman of color to have a leading role in a Star Wars movie. All oh, these sick, twisted people that write this stuff. 
Barnett would then make it abundantly clear the entire purpose of this article is to attack opponents of LGBTQ lifestyles and ideologies. He wrote, not only did the final film in the sequel trilogy, 2019's The Rise of Skywalker, greatly reduce Rose's screen time, but the brief lesbian kiss featured in the background at the very end of the movie felt disappointing for the audience members who waited so long for sincere queer storylines. <sighs> So they put a lesbian kiss in it. Who cares? So what if it was in the background? That's what you're focused on? Thankfully, the most recent installments of the Star Wars universe have built upon the franchise's contemporary legacy by including more representative storylines in an age of digital hate. The lesbian relationship between Val Sartha and Sinta Kaz and Andor makes an important step forward for the LGBTQ inclusion in Star Wars, as does the relationship between Osha and May's mothers and the Acolyte. So, you can tell by this breakdown of this article, which I'm not going to go any further, because John Trent does a great job of just obliterating this article, and the falsehoods, and the... And the, and the the, the false narratives that this individual decided to write. But what I want to get to is the comments. The comments over on X. Right out of the gate, Nerdrotic, Gary. The biggest problem with fandom has always been the corporate access media. Master of the TDS, the ability to speak does not make you intelligent. Valiant Renegade. I'm just here to watch your ass get shredded in the comments with this trash article laughing emojis. Can you explain the massive drop in your ad revenue recently? Oh, wait, I looked it up. And believe me, he would look it up. Uh, Jeremy, D-Day Cobra. Hi, popcorn bucket. So you've been ratioed. And this just goes on and on and on. And not only that, but let's go to the comments on the article, shall we? It's bad writing, not anything else. If you don't see that, you shouldn't work with movies. Just a part of the problem. And that is 100% correct. The reason why people don't like the Acolytes is because of the writing. It's bad writing, bad acting, bad pacing. The show is slow. There's been, there's been nothing good with this show at all. This one here, I'd agree that Star Wars fans have been vicious since the prequel tri trilogy. However, the entire criticism now is that Disney is pushing too many politics and not enough solid storytelling. There are plenty of shows that have LGBTQ characters, female main characters, and people of color that do not push an agenda and they're based in solid writing. The fact of the matter is Acolyte is just a bad writing and stale acting. Everything else is fine, but there's for sure nothing groundbreaking about it. Star Wars is full of great, strong female characters that fans love. Same with per people of color. The agenda just was pushed until recently, and that ruined it. The article nearly lost me to groundbreaking stories. There are no groundbreaking. There's nothing groundbreaking about this series. And if you, the journalist, paid more attention to the, to the reviews of the show, of which I have listened to and read many, you would notice a trend. It's bad writing. I do not think creatives and actors should get hate. However, they are not above criticism, and they can't stick their head in the sand and just blame the fans for review bombing and being all the is they can think of. In my humble opinion, the show is bad, the writing is contrived, bland, and uninspired, and that's only some of the show's problems. So there you go. There's your breakdown of this article over on Collider. Now, I'm going to ask, what do you guys think? Is it the fans that are ruining Star Wars? Or is it Disney Lucasfilm? Kathleen Kennedy, Dave Filoni. I think the fans are nothing more than passionate advocates for something that they truly love. Some, they've, some have loved this 
Uh, I've loved Star Wars since all the way back in 1977 when it first hit theaters. So I want you guys to share your thoughts in the comment section down below. And don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell so you don't miss a video, share this video out there with your friends and family, and with that, I will see you guys later.